Hello there, everybody. Welcome, and thank you for joining us for this presentation of Autodesk Build for Architects. Uh, we're really excited to show you this content here today. We think that you know we're we have a lot of great, valuable insight to share with you. Um, hopefully, streamline your workflows there. Uh, join with me is Tyler Camp from Autodesk, as well as Wayne Atkins from Autodesk, and my name is Aaron Wagner. I'm the director of Autodesk Construction for US CAD. Uh, you are Autodesk Platinum Partner. And I'll go ahead and let uh, Taylor, uh, Tyler introduce himself and then we'll, we'll get to Wayne. Uh, yes, I'm Tyler. I'm with Autodesk. I'm a technical sales specialist and uh, I come from the industry. I spent a few years uh, as an uh, admin for an architectural firm before the last uh, 15 years as a general commercial contractor. Go ahead, Wayne. Hi everyone, I'm Wayne Atkins with Autodesk. I'm the district manager for ACS, which is the Autodesk Construction Solutions Division. I manage a team of seven overseeing all of our business in Nevada, Southern California, and Hawaii. Appreciate everybody's attendance today and having me on the call. Awesome, perfect, thank you. So now Tyler's gonna talk about the uh, current state of the industry for us. Uh, currently, as you're looking at this here, you can see that it's a fragmented truth. You can see how that it uh, typically starts from design and it goes uh, multiple directions, you know, from project managers to estimating to general contractors, um, even to the owner. And uh, oftentimes we can find ourselves uh, doing redundant uh, systems or even duplicating uh, information. Uh, from the design to sharing information, having one person create an item in their system, then going to another system and creating it in their own, that it's really a spider web that can, you know, cause data silos and uh, lost in information. If we want to go to the next slide. <clears throat> what Autodesk has done is, as we've seen um, this source of truth of information going all over the place. We found that uh, also that it, how it impacts time and quality of life and items like this, but projects are, in this day and age, we're, we want them faster and faster. Um, and the only way to do that is to have a, a shared uh, platform or shared data as a foundation that shares information back and forth. And so what we're seeing here is that uh, second uh, row where it says shared data which is models drawings issues specifications is all the foundation that pushes back and forth and, and draws information through each phase of construction um, and the idea is that this is a tool to uh, take away uh, that duplicate entry that we're talking about but streamline it and allow for uh, projects to run more smoothly, to not use multiple points of solutions, but to have it in one place that shares the information through the full life cycle of a project. And to give uh, that information even at the end to operations and then feed back in if it turns into a, a tenant improvement project again later. Um, we can move to the next slide. All right. And real quick too, Tyler, uh, just a question there for you um, how would this you know so if, if there's some people that are using new forma and some other tools like that how would using a connected platform like this impact their relationship with the owner and, and the project overall so to that point I'm glad that that you asked that question is that you know it's that disconnect with new forma you know, that it's not connecting to other systems you're having to do duplicate entry whereas the owner the can also access information without uh, being connected to your system, but then also uh, construction in all phases that you're not um, taking information, duplicating it, it all comes together in one place um, and creates a better relationship as well. Um, one thing that's included with Autodesk Construction Cloud is the ability to do design reviews in a single source place where um, through other systems you have that inability which requires even more point solutions. Thanks for asking that, Aaron. Perfect, yeah, thank you.
All right. So now we're going to switch uh, gears and we're going to kind of give you a taste of Autodesk Build and what it what it uh, you know kind of can provide for project teams. So like Tyler mentioned, there's there's an entire platform that truly connects um, construction through or sorry design through construction. And now what we want to do is is uh, show you a bit of Autodesk Build so you can get a sense of how that can impact your workflow. So now I'm switching gears. And this is in my web browser over here, so there's um, you know minimal things to install. In most cases, nothing to install other than you know the application on on our mobile device. Uh, but this is Autodesk Build over here, and we can see from the home screen, um, it, it draws attention to things that are important to me. So your home screen, um, some of the the activity, and especially the work status items might look a little bit different um, to you, you know, than than it would see for me. Um, if you are interested in even more detail, you can of course go to Insight. Now within the platform here, because it is a unified uh, you know, project, one project end to end, um, and it's the only platform that can really say that and, and kind of hold to its claims, we can see here that we've got you know, our document management that we've been using for, for years and years. If you're a BIM 360 veteran, especially, this should be nothing new. Um, our design collaboration and model coordination tools you know, again, that we've been using for years. Um, you know, this screen cap right here, for example, is a clash that was identified in Navisworks, created and assigned as an issue inside the project over here. And of course, for this presentation, we're focusing on build. So within build, I have access to the rest of that project data. So I don't have to necessarily move from my design platform and then go into my pre-con or, or CA platform. It's, it's one continuous project end to end. And we're gonna go over parts and pieces of this uh, you know, as we move on. But this year has really been a huge year for con con uh, sorry, connected construction and design as well as, as, well as my speech here. But um, you know, so like we're talking, it connects your data, your workflows and your teams throughout that entire uh, life cycle. And you know, like we were talking a minute ago, that really does strengthen your relationship with the owner. And we believe it gives you a competitive edge to, to give the owner one um, you know ecosystem for the entire project there. Um, so the beginning of this year, we, we announced Autodesk Build that you see here on the screen, and then the inclusion of takeoff, uh, so we can do on-screen takeoffs and things like that, and our uh, BIM Collaborate tools um, that you're, you're probably already familiar with. So within this workflow, you know, of course, we can track all of our issues, and this becomes our digital punch list. Um, I remember years and years ago I, I started my career in architecture and we would do punch list with a, a big thick notebook i'd carry around a big heavy set of drawings and the specs um I, it wasn't we didn't have digital cameras back then when i first started but we you know try to capture all this data write it down and it you know take a good amount of time probably a couple of weeks to really capture all that information compile it into notes and then start to distribute it out to um, you know, the rest of the people on the project. What we're going to see here in a bit when we jump over to the mobile side of things is you can do your digital punch walks, um, or sorry, you can do your punch walks digitally on the mobile device, pull up a sheet, attach a photo or a video to that sheet, or you can create an issue. Your issues become kind of that combination of all of your observations on the project. So when you're walking around and you're, you're recording your punch, um, you know, you can start to look and say, okay, well, I'm in this location. You can filter things by a certain location or that are assigned to, you know, a certain party. And if you're, uh, you know, an advocate for root cause analysis, you can start to track things by their, their root cause as well and find out, you know, why there's kind of recurring events and things like that. It also carries forward, um, you know, if, if any of the issues kind of turned up some data that, uh, you know, was, was otherwise unknown. You know to the construction team and so they they generated an rfi it's very simple you know within a couple of clicks to take that issue and uh, generate an rfi from it or to have an rfi that might be underway and tie the two together it's it's really up to how it, it organically you know occurs on a project uh, but then tying that into the cost management getting the approvals for letting that rfi impact the cost of the project again one continuous project the right people have complete visibility for what they need um, and you know just kind of strengthens that that entire process um, we haven't talked about 
The rest of these will kind of get to parts and pieces of them, but you have your forms here. So if you do have a, stat, a set list of uh, punch items that you're, you're kind of looking for, um, you know, we do a lot of inspections, both by agency reviews as well as, um, you know, just general installation. We do some testing. Um, and we do have a lot of architect clients that, that use um, a standard form, you know, to, to kind of track those things. And with those forms, we can build into where if there's a defect that's found, it will require you to create an issue. And then that goes back to our, our issues tracking there. So we're building an accountability and all these things. I don't even have to get out of my seat um, and not to mention some of these other workflows and things that, that we see here. Uh, but we'll, we'll add kind of more detail in that as we move on. Uh, but let's go ahead and jump into one specific workflow that uh, impacts you unless yeah, I don't see any questions, but we'll uh, let's start with document approval. So this is something that is, uh, you know, it comes with, with Autodesk Construction Cloud. You may be familiar with it already. I'm just going to open up another tab of, of docs here for us so we can look at this. Uh, but you have your connected data that you're working on day in, day out. You know, you could have your Revit files here, your Civil 3D files. The entire design team can be working on their files within this ecosystem here. And we have, you know, a lot of companies that have moved their entire file system, including their libraries and resources, to Autodesk Construction Cloud. Um, but taking that data then and then now generating your reviews. So if you have to do a third party code review or an owner review or you know anything like that, it's it's very, very simple to do. Um, you can do it from the, the files over here, or you can actually go to the reviews tool. Um, and then you can create a review, grab the uh, files that you'll want, and I'll just grab you know a couple Revit files here. You can grab sheets, you can grab PDFs, you know, it really doesn't matter. Uh, what the files are, you know, because it's all coming from the same project here. Just kind of gather them and then go ahead and create that. Pick the approval workflow. Maybe we're doing some some third party code review and we want to um, get this started. So this would be maybe our, our accessibility review. So we'll go ahead and start that off and then hit submit. And because I've already predefined this workflow, it already knows who that third party reviewer is. I can CC other people so they can, you know, read and read those review comments and they'll be sort of privy to that. And then we can send a message to that. Um, he has three days to review that as soon as I hit send and now that's off and running and he, he can go through those documents and start to do markups and, uh, you know, set, set whether something is approved or, or approved with comments or, you know, whatever it might be. And all of that gets collected together as part of this review. So again, I don't have to go to all these different platforms and track all of these different communications. It's one workflow that's managed. So he's going to do his review and that one we have it set up to be a, a three part review. So, you know, you initiate it, then it goes for that initial review. And then in our case, it would go to the owner and then it would be back to us. We would get the results. Um, so it's a really, really effective tool for that. Hey, Aaron, real yes. quick. I just, you know, I think you were going through it, but like uh, part of it too is like, does this help with uh, key, with accountability and making assignments too, like even as you do the reviews? Absolutely. Yeah. So you're going to be able to track, you know, kind of who did the review. You're going to track what their comments are, but then also the the resolution of that. So you'll, you'll be able to see, you know, hey, somebody has, has you know, produced a, a comment on these drawings. You can track that comment until it's closed. So when you do the next review or something like that, you're going to have that entire backlog of, of kind of who did what and, and sort of what those what those different influences and reactions are. Absolutely. Um, and that, that also kind of ties into, you know, if somebody has um, issues that they've identified, just general defects, you don't have to necessarily go through, uh, you know, your checklists or anything like that. You can go to, you know, your your files here ideally it would be you know from your sheets um, you know kind of identifying especially for third party you can come in here and, and say okay well on my first floor plan I, I want to do just a general ac accessibility you know kind of review and and maybe there was something sort of in this unit that they found isn't really um, an accessible feature and so they can go ahead and create an issue um, we call this uh, I believe we have a accessibility one in here. We'll just call it building code, keep it simple. Drop that in there. I can assign it to somebody. As soon as I put a company or a name 
or a role in this field, whoever that applies to is instantly going to get an email. And then to your point there, Tyler, we'll be able to track accountability when they received it, when they responded to it, what the root cause is, you know, and, and uh, various other things that we can we can ultimately measure and, and report on. Yeah, great question. All right. Now, one thing with everything on Autodesk Build is you have full control over, you know, who can access the data, when and, and where and how, basically. Um, so, you know, part of that that hesitation to jump into a connected platform is, oh gosh, we're going to be in this the same place where multiple people can can start to interact with my data, and that's really not the case. You still have full control over that. So there's full, uh, you know, permissioning that's built in across all the all the workflows. So this one that we're looking here on the screen is for sheets. Uh, within the folders, you know, for docs, we can start to kind of set up permissions that are, you know, no access, view only, upload only, full edit access, all kinds of different things. You can even indicate who can create issues, who can respond to them, who can create RFIs, you know, and things like that. So we're connecting the team but it's very, very easily for those project admins to kind of keep people in their lanes. Do what you need to do as your responsibility area, but don't really teeter outside of that. Um, that's very, very easily easy to control here in um, the Autodesk Build ecosystem. And then the next slide over here is uh, versioning. So um, once my career did move into being more digital, we started to, you know, kind of have very clever file names. Um, well, at the time we thought they were clever or just very complex folder structures, you know, that would identify a certain set that we would deliver or, you know, a, a date, you know, is oftentimes that we would deliver a file and have the date at the end of it. Um, and the best one was, you know, uh, you know, architectural design underscore final. And, oh shoot, there was a change. Okay, final two. And then final, final, and final, I promise this is the last final. So there's all kinds of crazy file names and folder names that we had to do. And all of that completely goes away now uh, because you have a true document management platform. And so it's not your FTP site, it's not your Dropbox or anything like that. It is a document management platform where we can take our sheets or our files and things like that, upload them into the exact same spot, identify what version set it came out of. So if you have, you know, your bid set and then later your addenda that you're you're uploading into it, you don't have to do complex folder and file structures. You just kind of put in the same sheet or if you're in files, you do the same same file, same place, identify what set it is, but you have all of those versions tracked and recorded automatically for you. And you can always go back and you can, you know, view those versions, you can compare them. You can even do comparisons of those versions while you're out there on the job site. So if you're having an on-site discussion and, you know, you wanted to kind of compare the last version of the sheet to the newer version, you can absolutely do that while you're on mobile. So what I'm showing you here, you can do on mobile as well. Um, but again, you can do this with your, your 3D models. You can do it with, with all sorts of other files. Version control is recorded in there. So you'll have activity logs in, in terms of, you know, who uploaded it, when they uploaded it, who downloaded it, who viewed it. All those kinds of, uh, you know, features for uh, file activity will be accessible to you to, to kind of monitor and record. And you can even create reports from that. Um, so this one here, what we're looking at are two versions of the same drawing. Uh, we get the red and blue here. Don't don't pull out your 3D glasses. This is just a way to kind of measure the order of magnitude of where the changes are. Um, so we have the uh, newest version in red and the older version in blue here. Um, if it's not quite in alignment, we can use the align tool and kind of shift it around. If the colors are disturbing, you can you know do that if you like. Uh, but then we can switch this to side by side mode where we can you know start to visualize it so if we look back at the overlay mode we can see that this there's a lot of changes over here so let's dig into that we can go to side by side and kind of flip the pages between there and kind of see where that shift occurred and we're also seeing that uh, this this uh, casework here went from being slightly tilted to being uh, more vertical or maybe it was the other way around yeah it was the other way around so it was it was uh, kind of parallel to this wall over here and then we, we uh, 
made it a feature and, and kind of twisted a little bit. And oh, just now saw that that door changed too. So there's there's lots of uh, utility with being able to flip this back and forth. And that's with just comparing the versions. Another use of that would be to be like old school clash detection. You know, um, we used to pull out the light tables. Well, we, they're very, very heavy. We usually kind of pull the drawings to the light table, but either way, we put a drawing onto it put the other discipline drawing onto it and we would kind of do 2D clash detection. You can absolutely do that here. So I could overlay the architectural first floor plan, pull up the mechanical first floor plan as an example, see how they align. I could do the lighting plan with the furniture plan, you know, kind of see if they line up and, and things like that. And there's lots of other activity and things that are going on in here. Um, since we're here, I'll kind of describe it, but of course the those with the letters, these are our issues. Um, and then the rest of these are various types of markups. Um, this is a photo, so we have a photo that would be, you know, kind of tied into those. If we're doing it from the mobile device, we can take that photo and immediately clip it to the drawing. And then see we have this duplicate tool, so we can kind of copy that in different places. Um, if we have RFIs that we wanted to record, and this was a pain, <laughs> I'll just tell you, my uh, second summer of internship um, was handwriting, RFI responses on every single drawing that it applied to. I went through I don't know how many pencils um, and had that that awesome sepia smell that just kind of stuck with me for a while. Um, you don't really have to do that anymore. We can take that and we can start to kind of tie in, okay, here's this RFI. And if I was to duplicate that and put that markup kind of elsewhere, if I go to that RFI, it'll actually show me all of the sheets that I, I stamped that same markup on. And so it, it it's a full circle kind of thing that's that's going to help us out. Um, so there's that sheet that it applies on. We've got three markups on that one sheet for that RFI. Um, and then notice all of this really, really rich detail that's also tied in here. And folks, I haven't got out of my seat. This is the exact same project that we're looking at here um, that is joined alongside a, a full document management system. And now I'm going to hand it over to Tyler so Tyler can. Uh, talk about the RFI workflows. So I'm going to stop showing, change the presenter. And there you go, Tyler, you should have, you should have the reins now. And I do want to remind everybody while, while we're switching gears there, please, uh, please post your comments in chat. I see, or sorry, in the questions box. And I, I see, uh, I see somebody has posted a question. We'll get to that um, probably at the end of the discussion, but at any time, please type those questions in there. All right, we can see your screen there now, Tyler. You might be muted. All right, can you hear me now? Got you loud and clear. All right, thank you. Yeah, so uh, what I was going to say is that, as you can see, we're in the RFIs portion. The one thing that's uh, neat about RFIs is that it can be utilized through all phases of the life cycle as well. You can utilize it during the design phase, pre-construction, and to construction as well, and have it you know, work and communicate that way. I want to highlight under the settings, though, that there are some, com uh, you know, Additional features that allow you to collaborate um, even further. You have your traditional workflow that um, perhaps you would have, you know, any individual be able to create it, and then you can have an RFI manager. And this can be altered even during phases. So as you move from design into construction, it could then be handed over that the general contractor starts, uh, you know, is part of this if you wanted to, or it still maintains you as the design team. And then, you know, the reviewer who's going to review it. The additional one allows the ability to have two reviewers. And you could still have, you know, uh, co-reviewers to be a part of this. But the idea behind this is that um, oftentimes there's a client that uh, maybe they have an owner's rep that would like to review every RFI as well. And it's set up that in a detailed manner that it would go to uh, the design team and then to that person. And you can control that workflow that you... And I can pull this open so you can see this de in detail, the RFI workflow, that who it goes to, to the manager. Um, and then as it goes through the process to the reviewer one, reviewer two, and that it can come and be closed. Or, you know, if it's rejected to come back that way as well. 
uh, it has those options. You have your permissions, what allows you to, you know, even define by uh, roles and titles uh, who can and cannot access certain things. And you can have custom fields. The idea behind custom fields within an RFI is to allow you that maybe you're trying to track something uh, more specifically. And um, I will highlight this further when I open up the RFI, but you can create custom fields within an RFI that you could then utilize in the reports and filtering to uh, dial in even deeper. Maybe it's you wanted to, you were doing EFIS and you wanted to have the ability to track all, our, all RFIs that are EFIS water related because you're trying to uh, manage that throughout multiple projects. You can take that and have that data and go further. And you have advanced settings too that allow you to, you know, open and close and visibility. But to come in and have an RFI created, it's very simple. It has a status. There's also the draft function. The draft function is set up that oftentimes people are developing an RFI and it doesn't need to be posted on an open log yet because it's still being developed. But um, you have the RFI number that's automatically generated. You can actually uh, change this. You can add letters. You can add, you know, you know, H1 or something like that, and that would happen, and then it would keep taking the numbers in that numerical sequence from there. You title it the ball and court, which you could set up um, automatically who this goes to, and then any co-reviewers that you could group as well if you wanted, and then you can set up an automatic due date, the question, the suggested answer, but even taking a step further is that within all our files, you can attach any file, any drawing, any photo or video as well. Um, the reason I bring up the video portion is that oftentimes um, the best way to really describe something, even though it's in Word, is that you can also have a video. Say you were walking the job site or something like that and uh, during an inspection um, and have a video of what that question is or even your response. I know there are times when I worked for the design team that we would go do our weekly job walk and we would try to even respond to RFIs and to be able to take a video that even described uh, what the response was to you know fix that footing or moving something really adds to the paper trail. You can have a suggest answer, but then also you can, uh, as far as the further connection with the contractor and the owner is that you can create potential uh, cost exposures or change orders, assets or submittals, or even that form that I was talking about for my inspection can be attached to this RFI. And then you have these additional uh, features in here that if it's got cost impact schedule, which allows all teams internally and externally to better collaborate and be uh, and understand the statuses and what's happening. Um, you have your categories of what it is is it constructability is there and this is this custom field that i talked about you could say i want to to market all mechanical or i want this custom field to be what the trade is and then at the end of the project you could take and extrapolate that data even to understand maybe where uh design uh commonalities are or maybe a specific trade that might have struggled on the project and watchers is any individual or group that uh, needs to be notified that the RFI went out or was responded to. And then once you're in the RFI, uh, you have the ability to come in and you know respond to the RFI. But I want to highlight kind of what this looks like here. What you're seeing is you can see the official response was rejected um, on this particular one. But you have general information when it was due. Is there any impacts? Any additional information? Uh, you can see the references that are attached here, even issues and meeting minutes and agendas. And then you have your activity log. What's neat about the activity log is that you can have a timeline. Instead of having to go back to your emails and understand when things were sent and received, it's tracking it all in the background. And you also have the, a tagging feature that you can go between all members. So even if you wanted to notify a client that like hey you know uh, chad i this rfi needs your approval due to cost or design um, 
integrations just as a way to be able to communicate and click submit and it'll actually tag and notify them via email and also within the system that they need to look at this so the idea is really to keep things in a central location rather than multiple points but then also if you if there ever is an issue you have a whole timeline of when it was created who it went to how long it took or um, that you could even say in here, I don't understand this RFI, you know, we need to, let's talk on this date and have a whole timeline set up there for, for it. And once you have, you've entered in an RFI response, which, you know, you can collaborate with multiple people, you click close and distribute or return to the reviewer, and then it would go to these individuals through that system. Um, <clears throat> Part of being connected is also submittals. Um, as far as submittals, being connected throughout the process is the ability to, sorry about this loads, is to have all, you can see what's in here, what's created. Um, you can bring these in and bulk imports through either Excel or other uh, products like Pipe. But as you come in and have your registry that's created in here, which can be utilized not only during you know, construction, but post-construction for the owner to come in and look at submittals as well. Uh, but if I come in, to, before I go and create one, I wanna show the settings as well, is that you can come in and do permissions, default values of what the review times are, default watcher list. So we can come in and say, here's all the people that I want to be part of this list. And also my response is you can come in and even uh, edit what these are. Each company has their own uh, language that they want for submittals. Some say approved as note, you know, they don't want it just to say approved. It may just be noted as approved or, you know, you can have that full customizability. And then you also have the ability to come in and add uh, types of submittals uh, that you want to be tracking as well. If I come in to create a submittal, I'd be, you come in, select, you know, the spec section, the title, the description, if it's part of a package or add it to a package on the fly, you have that ability. You also can assign it a type, like I was mentioning earlier. So I could say that this is, you know, product data. Once again, this allows you to feed back into the reports and also within here to know what submittals you may or may not have gotten or are expecting and then you can assign to a responsible contractor. I know when I was doing pre-construction on a design build project, we were still doing some submittal reviews at a high level. And so this actually gave us the ability as the designer or even a contractor to assign it to uh, Carl and tell him, hey, we need to have the air handlers for review on the 29th. And then when I click create, it creates this blue item here that notifies Carl that he owes us this information and tracks it in that manner. And then he can upload it or you can upload it here under this portion. The piece that I really wanna focus on too further is after you've gotten this middle, is this section here where when it the design team needs to have it reviewed. But these last two are the collaboration mechanism between all parties that I think was a struggle for me um, as on the design team, but even the general contractor, making sure that we understood lead times. So you can put in, what's the lead time for the air handler? Is it 90 days? And then when do I need it on the job site? By having this information here, it allows not only the contractor to uh, coordinate internally, but also collaborate externally with the design team and the owner because as this is created we can come in here you can see and okay what is it Stu? what's the lead time and be able to really understand and you know filter and create a report what the priorities are oftentimes you could get as many as 10 submittals in the same week and to know which ones are the true priority are key to communication and success uh, once again, it's going to feel very familiar, familiar as we looked at the RFIs, but you can see the general information. You can see the attachments, what the original one is for review, and then what the official response would be added. And here, so you'd have the two different. 
you see who the participants are, any references. Again, the timeline over here, keeping track of the submittal and what's happened. And if I come in for review, this is where I would browse as the designer. I'd say, I want to add my file here and I'll click it. My official response approved is noted. Um, be sure to see page seven for comments. You can put that in there and click done. And then it now is come in here. It says, here's what we have. I have my official response and I can close and distribute. Um, from there, I think I, I'm going to, you know, hand it back to you, Aaron, as well. All right, perfect. Thank you. And we did have a few questions come in. One that I wanted to kind of bring up to you and, and um, you know, kind of, let's see, uh, change myself to a presenter. I'm trying to multitask and speak at the same time here. Um, where you know so the others will we'll get to you here shortly but uh we certainly wanted to um, answer this one here live so the question is how often are you seeing or hearing architects or designers managing the rfi process isn't this process typically started by the gc and then reviewed by the design team give you a chance to respond first i have kind of a yeah a no that's, a, give you a, that's a great question you know from my side i've oddly been seeing it more often um especially among certain groups uh, especially developers uh, groups starting that process early uh, a lot of it is dependent upon how it's set up i agree a lot of times it's by the general contractor but uh, i've seen a trend lately where uh, especially early in design they're wanting to track rfis now uh, during uh, early design from sds to dds um, and so there's been a lot of that portion happening more often on that side not so much from the construction side that i've seen but aaron what are you what have you been seeing yeah so i mean i, I definitely agree with with the statement that usually you know it's something that the the general contractor kind of dictates uh but if you're you know even for the design team you know you have to have a way of tracking the rfis that do come your way in projects um, and this gives you a platform to do that um but it's less taking control from the general contractors so you're not in control of the rfi process you're more of providing a place within the context of, of the rest of your project and that goes to be you know in my mind a really good competitive advantage for owners saying hey we have a platform that we can manage you know the entire process we can you know bring in the, the general contractor and everybody in this one single platform so there's you know less risk of you know losing data or or things kind of falling through the cracks or missing data and transfers or you know um like going back to the summer that i spent handwriting rfis on drawings i guarantee you i missed some or i misspelled some or you know just my hand got tired and so my handwriting was illegible you know all those worries and things go away you know with with a platform like this so you're not wrong necessarily in the question but it's just kind of taking it to you know kind of another level hey what could we do with this platform and what does that do for our relationship with the owner is, is kind of how i would i would approach it um, and then we had one more question and we'll, we'll certainly get to the other questions at the end but i do want to clarify this one um, we're all newbies and like that all that it does i, I assume related to uh, autodesk build here um, and it sounds like they were told again charting would be soon available when will this feature be available and so are you talking about the schedule tool because we can actually pull in the schedule tool and uh, just last week even or the week before I think Tyler was showing me some really cool things you can do with schedule and issues and cost management and all sorts of other things but um, the gentleman that asked the question if you want to kind of clarify are you talking about the schedule tool or was it kind of an enhanced add-on to that schedule tool and I hope my uh, network connection here uh, behaves for the rest of this. But All right, there we go. So this one, yeah, we've got the project schedule in here. This is coming from P6, um, but we do have some issues and some other things that are tied in here in our, our uh, GAMP format. So that's, that's ready to go uh, today. Yep, so follow-up question to the, the sort of RFI RFI conundrum. Um, it's great if all parties on the same platform, the owner would need to dictate to all parties that they need to use the same platform. 
it's all too often the designers are on a different platform than the construction side. And you're right. You're you're absolutely right. You know, so when I was in uh, the industry, one of my single biggest frustrations is that any given project going through the different stages, we're talking about several different projects. Um, and so it's, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of risk there. There's a lot of frustration. Um, and so that's one of the things that Autodesk is wanting to provide by creating a, a fully connected platform. And yeah, just kind of having that debate, get it into the, the BIM execution plans or, you know, the, the different agreements when you, you know, go in and you're doing your, your RFP um, interviews with the owner and, and kind of presenting it, and, you know, kind of helping them to understand what that means for the project team. is It's not an easy conversation, but I think it's a necessary conversation in this day and age. Um, if I can, you know, send a meal to somebody around the world from my phone and, and you know, watch a movie with with somebody on the other side of the world, you know, very, very easily. I think we sh we could all work in one project and, you know, there's there's different ways to go about it. But you're not wrong. Um, it's just a different conversation, you know, different times, things like that. Okay, yeah, thanks, Jerome, for the confirmation there. And we'll go ahead and jump into the rest of this, and we'll, we'll get to those other questions here shortly. We do appreciate that you all are asking those questions. It's really, really good. Um, I don't know about you, Tyler, but I tend to get nervous uh, if there are no questions. This is really, really good. Keep them coming, everybody. Yeah. Thank you. I look, for, I look forward to answering them at the end. So. And then let's see. So jumping into our QA, QC and CA workflows, um, so one example of this, you know, just just you know, from my time in architecture, I could probably think of several. We'd be here all day thinking of things that could have gone better with our communication streams. I remember one in particular. Uh, it was a private school, K through 12, uh, that we were creating a build or building a building for. We we're in CA, um, kind of doing our site walk, and we realized that uh, the beam for one of the middle roofs was crossing the opening where the elevator installer would need to pass in order to install the elevator. Um, not an ideal situation, but it's something that we needed to get resolved. So we you know, took a photo of it, marked up the drawings, you know, did all of our communications. But by the time we got it to the structural engineer and through, you know, all the negotiations and kind of figuring out what should happen, who's paying for it, how's it going to you know, occur, what's the schedule and the timeline. It took over two weeks. It was nearly three weeks to resolve that. Um, and that was just by a deficiency in communication. And it's, it's one thing to, here, I got to look at the drawings and, and kind of see how we can re-engineer this. But it's entirely another when the, the, the tripping point is, um, you know, just communicating. So I want to switch over to mobile here real quick. Um, so this is my iPad screen that you're seeing here. So this is Autodesk Build. A lot of those workflows and things, in fact, nearly all of them um, that, that Tyler and I have been showing you are available on mobile. Um, so we've got you know that homepage that we saw before. We have our sheets that we'll be able to see here. It's even telling me that it's not current. If you remember from you know when I first showed you my home screen, it said that 33% of the users are working on up-to-date mobile information. I'm one of the other 66% um, that are not <laughs> running on updated mobile mobile data here. So this is uh, flagging me here that, hey, buddy, you, you should probably update this so you have uh, updated information on site. But moving on, we have our files, um, any kind of form. So this is where we'd have our, our punch list form if you have one um, already. Uh, we definitely have our issues that we'll get to in just a minute. If you need to know who to contact for certain things, you can tap on that and give them a call. Um, and then the other workflows that, that we're talking about. So the, the commissioning for assets, furniture, equipment, um, you know, all kinds of different other things that we want to run through the commissioning stage on here. You can create or respond to an RFI on mobile, and you can even check the status of submittals while you're walking around on site. Um, but this one in particular, let's say, you know, I'm, I'm just kind of doing my, my pre-punch inspection here, just kind of walking the site. We've planned a visit. I've got my sheet open up here with a bunch of different things. And then I notice, hey, there's, there's something going on with this vent here. Maybe we should probably clean it prior to handover. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just grab my uh, photo icon here and I'll put it there. And I'm gonna go ahead and take a new photo, snap it of that vent. I can create tags of this if I wanted to. Um, looks like I don't have the one there, but we'll do vent. 
add that to that, hit done, save it, and we'll just leave it like that. And there's some other things that you can do with those photos. You can mark it up and, and various other things. But now that's a markup that's on, oops, sorry, if I grabbed the right one. It's a markup that's actually on my drawings. And so we can, we can see that um, information there, not the ellipse, but my photo. I can publish that to the rest of the team um, and do things like that. So that's one way to do it. I can also go into my issues over here and I can say, you know, maybe it's a work to complete or a general housekeeping issue. But well, we're just going to call it quality. I could put it in the same place or nearby. I can assign it to somebody. Um, let's actually do, I don't know if we had that role in there, but we'll go ahead and we can grab roles, users, all kinds of different things. I'll grab my contractor there, assign it to them, go back. Um, and then, you know, we can add some watchers for our CC list. We can give it a start date, a due date, and all those kinds of things. Um, I am connected to Wi Fi right now. Um, I, if you're not connected to Wi-Fi on the project site, that's absolutely fine. Uh, but just by touching Wi-Fi, whoever has that contractor role on the project has already received a notification. It's already in their bucket. They're they're ready to uh, take action on it. And then of course we can take those photos. We can uh, you know pick it from project photos. So I can in fact grab that last one that I just created, have that on my my issue there, and then sort of move on with my day. So it's a very very seamless process. Very easy to just quickly record some things photos, videos, um, you know, mark up the drawings, mark up the photo, all kinds of things with, uh, you know, very, very minimal effort. And again, it's the same project ecosystem that we've been doing our Revit work in and, you know, our civil 3D work and AutoCAD work in, we, you know, really haven't gone anywhere else. Um, you know, so it's just really, really simple tool to use on site, way better than, than I, I had when, when I uh, used to do my CA walks. Um, so I certainly appreciate it. Um, all right. I think I'm going to hand it now over to uh, Wayne. I think. <laughs> yeah, thanks everybody who's uh, presented so far. Great presentation, Aaron. Um, you know, just to kind of touch on one last thing from that mobile application. Main difference you're going to see using the Autodesk Build mobile app versus any of the other apps on the iPad is that it's a proprietary format for viewing these drawings. You can actually hold 100,000 blueprints on some of the iPads that are out right now today, go completely offline, and every single one of those drawings is going to load and render instantly. Um, we're going to go ahead and touch a little bit on Autodesk's journey into construction um, in that same note, and I'll tell you a little bit about where some of that proprietary format came from. It holds a special place in my heart. So um, many of you know us as a, as a company that's done a lot of our design and coordination um, you know, everybody's familiar with Revit, AutoCAD, Civil 3D, Navis Works, some of these products that were, uh, you know, in the marketplace for years and years and years and years. Um, we have made a very, very big push uh, starting in 2010, moving now into 2020 uh, and 2021 with field execution, project for lifestyle, and some of the connected construction workflows we're achieving right now today. Um, you'll notice some of the names down here in the, uh, the bottom. Um, you'll notice Building Connected, uh, recent acquisition, uh, Plan Grid, the acquisition that I came from, um, Orgo, Pipe. All of these products uh, were purchased with the interest of connected construction. Um, I'll touch a little bit on Plan Grid just because that's where I came from. Um, Plan Grid was a company that started off uh, with the main idea of building out a proprietary format to view blueprints and increase efficiency in the field. Um, that's where you're seeing some of that automation come from, as well as some of the um, ability to be able to pick up and view those 100,000 drawings. Um, I think the main reason why they did that acquisition was to get some of that proprietary viewing um, of, you know, not PDFs. So when you are looking at these drawings within the iPad, um, you're actually looking at a proprietary format. Um, why that proprietary format is important to you as architects is as you go and you do those CA workflows, you really do want to have instant access to all of the drawings and all of the information to kind of figure out um, how we got to where we are um, and maybe what is missing from these plan sets that we can document real time in the field. I've been out to a ton of architecture firms and they tell me that their current process is that they're going out into the field, um, sometimes even nowadays with paper plans. They're making markups on those drawings. 
they're documenting existing conditions that maybe weren't on the plan sets. They're then going back to the office and they're spending hours assembling all of those pictures, all of the field documented information into a report. Um, right now, today, that's fully accomplishable with the Autodesk Build uh, mobile app where you could hit one button and you could have a full report submitted before you even leave the field. Um, we can go ahead and jump to the next slide if you'd like. So why now? Um, in the past, uh, PlanGrid had essentially one licensing model, and that licensing was a per-user licensing model. Um, from the standpoint of an architecture firm, it was sometimes cost prohibitive to roll out PlanGrid to everyone at your firms. Uh, with the launch of Autodesk Build, we launched a brand new licensing model. That model is an unlimited model that will allow you to have any person within your company licensed on the Autodesk Build application, which includes the PlanGrid mobile application at no additional charge, and allows you to have any single person within your company to have instant access. It also allows you to share access to owners and consultants that you work alongside to make for a truly collaborative workflow and allow everybody to gain the benefits of some of these um, workflows that we showed today. Um, we do see this as a way where you can all start to eliminate some of that double entry. Uh, many of the architecture firms that I went and uh, met in person in Southern California, um, Hawaii and Nevada during my travels were running their businesses off New Formal. Um, some of the downsides and some of the feedback that I got was they had, you know, people in the field using something like a plan grid and Autodesk uh, build type product, a BIM 360 build type product, a Procore type product. And those, those general contractors out in the field were writing all of their RFIs in that system. But then we had architects that were then going re-entering all of those into new format so they could do things like um, you know, track when it was maybe redundant RFIs or track when there was excessive RFIs or different stuff. Um, they also were using it to do stuff like, um, you know, automatically grabbing all of those emails and saving them um, alongside the project so they could track everything. Um, the downside of that was there really was a lot of double entry. There wasn't any general contractors in the field using New Forma. So you never really had a time where you could have a collaborative platform uh, to deliver these different workflows that we talked about today. With Autodesk Build, um, architects purchasing that unlimited model will allow them to share access with the owners, allow them to share access with consultants. And then if they decide to, there is a way where you can invite in general contractors and subcontractors who can then bring their own license to have a truly collaborative way to deliver some of the workflows that we went over today. Uh, does anybody have any questions on any of this stuff? Feel free to post them in the chat. Um, we'd love to hear some more about, uh, you know, your questions that you have on the unlimited model in the chat, and then we can touch base with them on the end. Um, that's all I have for today. I'll go ahead and pass the mic back over to Aaron. Let's see, I think that's uh, that's it. So all of this is part of the Autodesk Construction Cloud, um, and so we're enabling AEC companies all over the world to forget about the old days, the you know, the paper trails, the uh, missed information getting, getting transferred over or the delays in transferring you know the data over um you know which which adds up to, to quite a bit and it really opens up the entire project team from architects on down to a lot of risk you know by being in disparate systems there's there's a lot of risk that we're exposed to with that um and so now we take that highly fragmented industry and bring it into benefiting from truly connected construction so that's it for today. I don't know if Tyler or Wayne had any closing comments. There were a couple other questions I was going to answer live, but um, so if you guys have any comments before we, we jump into that. I don't have anything in addition. Um, I know we're running close to the top of the hour, so uh, if to answer the questions would be important to me. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Um, so the first question, I, I think both of these are related to the design review process. The first one um, was, can you have multiple people review the same document um, at the same time, or is it single? And absolutely, you can. When you're creating your review workflows, there's a couple ways you can do it. Um, I would do it actually at the, the review workflow setting, where you create that, and then you have multiple steps, but any of those steps, 
you can shift into being a group approval. And with those, you can say, okay, I need of the 10 people that are going to receive this, I need three minimum responses. And you can, you can set that up and control that. Um, even when you pass this off, so even if it's say a one step normal approval, instead of indicating, you know, just a certain person, you can put role or company in there. And then, you know, same thing. If it's a role, let's say um, architect and they're, Five, five to ten people on the project that have that in their their role designation there they're all going to get that and be able to you know kind of provide their influence to that review process so yeah absolutely you can have multiple people review that uh, the next one there um, not as easy to answer but but def there is an answer um, is if you missed a critical document or provided the wrong published model can the reviewer reject it or can you uh, reissue for review um, so you can what I would do is I would void that or, or like you said, have the reviewer reject it. Um, and then with a follow-up review, you can, you know, be sure to include the, the correct data with it. Right now, there's not a way to append documents to a review that's already underway. Um, I think that would kind of hijack the review a little bit if we were adding documents to a review that's already underway. Um, so it would be just kind of a follow-up review that you would, you would create um, for that. Um, and I don't see any other questions coming in and we are at the top of the hour. Um, so yeah, on behalf of USCAD, I definitely want to thank you for your time, and I appreciate Tyler and Wayne. It was actually your idea. Um, thank you for for including me on this. It's um, such a powerful discussion, and and I appreciate everybody's time here. Yes, Thanks, thank everyone. you all.